we have a sound source moving to the right. But this sound source is moving to the right at one specific speed. Tell me what that speed is. Andrew Chen. Is it the speed of sound? It is moving at the speed of sound, which is technically called Mach 1. Mach 2 would be twice the speed of sound, Mach 3, so on and so forth. So you can tell that because remember, each one of these wave fronts is a sound wave, and it is moving out from the sound source at the speed of sound, yet this, the sound source, is also moving at that speed. Now, remind me, what is a wave front, Carla? <clears throat> A crest, as far as a sound wave is concerned, puja, a crest means? It is the distance between the two. No, no, no that would be the distance between two crests. I would say a crest, as far as a sound wave specifically means what about the air? It's compressed, so we have what? Uh, What's true about the air? I agree it's compressed. I'm looking for a physical quality of the air. It's a high density, right? So at a crest, at a wave front, we have a crest, which is a location of high density. But notice what happens right here when we're moving at the speed of sound. All of these wave fronts are actually compressed in the same specific location, which means we have a very high density spot right there, right where, um, right when we're moving at the speed of sound, or greater than the speed of sound. If you look at this particular picture right here, you can see in this figure right here, the object is moving supersonically, which is faster than the speed of sound. And it's created this cone, essentially, this wake of high density where all of these wave fronts are in the same specific locations. We have a high density cone that surrounds the plane. It's like a wake of, well, anything moving supersonically. We're going to backtrack a minute. We're going to go somewhere else. July 4th, fireworks. Mr. Palmer's favorite part of the fireworks is before the fireworks even begin. They send up a tester to make sure that they've got the height right, the wind, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a giant explosion. I particularly enjoy this one. Because not only can you hear this explosion, you can also watch it. Yeah, you can see it, you can hear it, you can see it. I think you can feel it. Taste it. Wow, you guys are amazing. I don't think I could taste it or smell it. Maybe a long time later I might be able to smell it, but no. I was going with feel. So, not only can you see it, not only can you hear it, but you can also feel it. But my question is, what is it that you feel when you have this loud explosion? Heather. Ah, I need a little bit more. Shockwave isn't enough for me. It doesn't describe it well. It's, well, it's a wavefront. It's a wavefront. It's a crest. It is a high density wave running into you. There's this giant sphere that goes out in all dimensions, in all directions, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> and it, then when it runs into you, you feel it, but you also hear it. And you interpret that as an explosion, as a boom, right? Coming back to the wake around the object moving at or above the speed of sound. This was what? This is a high compression, high density area. So what do you hear when this wake runs into you? Something that sounds like an explosion, right? Was there an explosion? No. no. But you interpret it as an explosion because that's what we think of it. And we call it, Hedler, a sonic boom. Now, one of the things that I want to make sure you get in your head today is that for some reason there is this concept with people that a sonic boom occurs when you cross the sound barrier, when you go from just below Mach 1 to just above Mach 1, and that there's this big explosion that occurs and then you move on. That's not correct. A sonic boom is the wake of something moving supersonically. And when that wake runs into you, you hear something that sounds like an explosion because that, when that wake, that high compression wave runs into you, that's how you interpret it. Now, I want to look at a couple of uh, things here. So this is a 
picture, actually we'll start with this one. This is a picture of a bullet moving at two and a half times the speed of sound or Mach 2.5. And what you'll see here is actually taken in polarized light and that way you can actually see the density of the air. And this is the high density compression wave that's being dragged with the bullet. And if this part, if, you were, if this were to run into you right here, you would hear the sound of a sonic boom. You can see there's actually a small one here because there's an indentation in the bullet as well, which is causing that sonic boom. This is a picture of a plane. Now, this only happens at specific, um, there have to be the correct conditions. You have to have the correct humidity level. You have to be moving at the correct speed, which is just greater than Mach 1. And it only occurs at these specific conditions. And I don't fully understand how it works, but my understanding is that what happens is that the um, air then uh, release, uh, it compresses the water vapor out of the air. So it only wow. happens at certain humidities. Now, so this gives it just a good visual of the cone, the wake of the plane moving supersonically. I also have this, which is a, nope, not that one, uh, this one which is a video of a plane doing the exact same thing. So this is a video of a plane moving supersonically at, during these perfect conditions when you can get this visual, which gives a good representation of the wake or the cone that follows the plane. Okay. Now, I wanna talk for a minute about what you hear with respect to the plane. So the plane is coming toward you, the plane is coming toward you, and let's say right here, at this point, what are you going to hear coming from the plane at this particular point? Pooja. What are you going to, what sound are you going to hear with respect to the plane at this point? It's okay. Who can answer the question other than those two? <laughs> and Do you not hear anything? You don't hear anything. Because remember, the plane is moving supersonically. So there's been time for the light to get to you. You can see the plane, but there hasn't been time for the sound to get to you. All right, so how about right, let's say right here, when the plane is directly in front of you, what are you going to hear from the plane at this particular point? Crafts. Do you hear the sound as if it was over there? No, you don't hear the sound as if it was over there, Andrew? Still don't hear anything. Still don't hear anything, right? Because if the plane is directly in front of you, there hasn't been time for the sound to get to you. It has to get just a little bit beyond you. Okay. So now, let's say that eh, maybe right there is where this wake runs into you. What do you hear now, Pooja? An explosion. Well, do you hear an explosion? No. You hear something that you interpret as an explosion, right? It is the sonic boom, which sounds like an explosion, but it's just this compression wave that runs into you. Now, what do you hear at this point? After the sonic boom, you are now inside this wake, this cone of this plane. What do you hear now? When you're inside the cone? <laughs> do you hear that big explosion noise? No, you've already heard the explosion. You're now inside the wake of the plane. Of what? Plane. Of the plane. You're just going to hear the sounds from the plane. Whatever sounds the plane happen to be, happens to be making. Okay. So, again, as the plane is coming toward you, you are not going to hear anything because it's moving supersonically. And it's not until that cone runs into you, with that wake first runs into you, you're going to feel that compression wave. You're going to hear that sonic boom. And then afterwards, you're going to be inside the cone, the wake of the plane, and you're just going to hear the sounds of the engine of the plane. 